Spiritual investment. Walking in the early evening, beginning to pray, I caught myself having more than a mustard seed of faith. A feeling that everything was as it should be and we would be more than okay. All the fears built up from countless yesterdays and which of us doesn't have a laundry list of those were scattered through dissipating clouds and I felt the presence of God walking with me down a dark and empty street. Faith is something we reach for, not something that just lands on our laps. It's a work in progress and something we yearn to build through the avenues and train stations of fear. But those moments, if we're lucky enough to have one where faith is absolute, come from a kind of spiritual investment, a sincere dedication to building and sacrifice, which I suppose is both good and bad news, but mostly good news. The only bad news is words like dedication and sacrifice aren't exactly a party, at least not on the surface, but the freedom from fear they can bring about is actually a party, and not only is it a party, but it's really the party. In some ways, in many ways, it's the only party in town. And the cover charge to get in is dedication, investment, and sacrifice to build freedom and faith and understanding that a relationship with God is a two-way street. My journey to faith began with being open to all teachings and teachers, all doctrines and religions, espousing that there are many roads to the same place, practicing yoga, listening to Hindu mantras, believing in Jesus, digging the Buddha. In short, I was all over the place with no real center focus. Out of that, I became a follower of Christ, but for a long time, my faith was more of an idea and less of a practice. I thought just announcing I had faith should be enough. My reasons for following Christ were simply because out of all those practices, his teachings and his words resonated most profoundly and because the personal nature of that faith resonated most deeply with the connection I had with God. And that I sensed a caring from the Creator that was both personal and loving and even emotional. I shifted my behaviors a little and I prayed, but my spiritual investment was far from total and so my spiritual power reflected that investment. We often separate the pragmatic from the spiritual. We put them into different categories and in doing so limit the reach of both. Because in actual fact, there is nothing more pragmatic than investing heavily in our faith. And no other investment will give us spiritual power, which amounts to power over fear, looping us back to the pragmatic, which awards us with a kind of power over our daily life and ability to reach for our dreams and create the kind of life we want to live on this material plane. This is why working on faith is like building a foundation for our lives here on earth on bedrock rather than sand. And this is good news because it means we have a choice here to overcome the strongholds that limit us and keep us in negative loops of dissatisfaction with our lives. It all begins with vague ideas about belief and an instinct that there is more to that than society will agree with, specifically these days when faith is practically seen as a dirty word in the media anyway. But we also have to consider the source which might be motivated to subjugate and control mankind, being aware that self-empowerment and spiritual power comes when we don't just claim faith, but rather invest ourselves entirely in its pursuit. So how do we do that? It starts with motivation, which brings us back to the good news. Think of it like a drunk that knows they need to get sober, and so they finally go to their first AA meeting. Is that a fun time for them? Hell no, it's not. They are at a bottom and attempting to stop the only thing that's given them any release from a mountain of pain, but which is also destroying their lives. So they know their approach to everything must change. 
In the rooms, they say we are ready when we are sick and tired of being sick and tired. At that point, the pain of facing sobriety is less than going on as they've been going. And so they have the motivation to seek change. In life, we don't have to be a drunk or an addict to reach similar places where we are sick and tired of being sick and tired, where all the seeking and following the whims of our bodily desires have led, a, led us to nowhere but confusion and fear in and amongst the glory of life which holds blatant promises that we can't come close to reaching even as they dance all around us. I bring up the example of AA because that drunk in his first meeting in order to escape his fate needs to be motivated enough to do the work of sobriety and motivated enough to face the pain he's been running from his whole life. And millions have done just that, so it's not impossible if the desire is strong enough and pain is the springboard for that desire. So perhaps overcoming fear in our own lives and the endless loops leading to emptiness and confusion is less extreme than the drunk in AA for the first time, but the analogy is still solid. We have to be sick of the meaningless and the dead ends the anxiety, the depression, the cheap escapes, the vague attempts to change, and the ignoring of the vast reality of a spiritual life that remains something we are always detached from and always out of reach as it resides blatantly in front of us the whole time. We have to get to the place where we ask ourselves, what if I actually reach for it? and become motivated to make a spiritual investment beyond the conceptual? What if I actually put my whole self into it? What would that mean for my life? A mustard seed of faith is what Jesus said we needed. But let me be bold enough to update that for our times. A mustard seed of faith and total burnout from a life of running. My friend Billy Falcon, and I talk about this sometimes, he's an amazing songwriter, he wrote a bunch of Bon Jovi's hits. I brought up the mustard seed to him and he said that people misunderstand the mustard seed. He said, the mustard seeds grow into a massive plant. He says there's nothing small about a mustard seed if we measure it by its potential. And this is where spiritual investment comes in. We just need a spark, enough to believe in a direction and enough motivation to really invest. And what happens is something rather stunning. The pragmatism of it all reveals itself and we have a light bulb moment as I did walking down that dark street where there was a total absence of fear, a total recognition that I was taken care of and understanding that my investment in all this towards faith was actualizing. The light bulb was just this. Oh wow, this stuff actually works. This is more than just lip service. The mustard seed growing all over the street, sprouting down the block, showing me the pathway home. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe, and tell us about your journey with faith. And if you've had any of these kind of moments, how much you invest in, if you want to invest more. It's just pretty amazing when the more you invest in something, the more you get out of. It's obvious, but I think in terms of faith, it's something that we don't talk about that often. Anyway, have a great day.